If I had just one wish, I would try to make it clear. I like to fly so high right up through the atmosphere. Circling the earth, going round and round. Gliding through space, then coming back down in another orbit. Orbit on the space shuttle. Can you imagine being weightless? Feeling so light. Feeling so light. Stepping out the back door, dropping off a satellite. You set it loose, then you let it linger. You can lift a thousand pounds with your little finger when you're weightless. On the space shuttle. Yeah. We have a go for the engine start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of the maiden voyage of Endeavor on a satellite rescue mission. I was worried. You look spaced out. I kind of was. I was thinking about what it'd be like to be an astronaut exploring the universe. So you want to be an astronaut, huh? That's cool. You bet I do. Wouldn't it be great to spend your life exploring space? That's okay for you, but I want to be President of the United States, a job that keeps my feet on the ground. Ow! Oh! Hard hat Harry, genie on the job. And next time you guys want to get a hold of me, why don't you call me on my space phone and not drop me on my head? Harry, you're back. Harry, it's you. Of course I'm back, and of course it's me. Hey, Jerry, hey, Maria, and I'm ready to space boogie. Yeah. Hey, and I hear you want to be an astronaut. Not me, her. Oh, I knew that. That's right. I think it would be an out-of-this-world experience to live, to work, and to explore space. But I'm only 10. I can't do much about going into space until I'm older. Oh, my little space buddy, what do you mean there's not much a 10-year-old can do? I would think there's not much a 10-year-old can't do. But I'm not even old enough to drive, let alone fly. Well, you don't need to drive in order to fly. All you have to be is old enough to dream with your imagination. And with my special genie powers, we three can go on a magical space adventure. Awesome! When do we leave? Do we have to leave the ground? Oh, you mean like this? Whoa, this is fun! That's right, and it's only gonna get better. Okay, Commanders, you set the course, and you set the position. And where do you want to go on your space mission? The space shuttle. I want to fly the space shuttle. Your wish is my command. With lightning speed, your command I'll heed. As stars go by, the space shuttle will fly. I can't believe this! Is this for real? Is this the real space shuttle? Is this the one flown in space? Well, yes and no. No, it's not the real space shuttle, and no, it didn't actually fly into outer space. But yes, it's an exact duplicate of the space shuttle, and this is where our space adventures will begin! So what are we waiting for? Let's do it! Let's go! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hmm. First things first. With a flash of lights before we board the shuttle and before your flight, here are your t-shirts that fit just right. Awesome oh, asteroids. asteroids! Harry, these aren't real spacesuits. No, but these are going to be a lot more comfortable for our journey. And here, why don't I show you the different kinds of spacesuits? I think when you see these, you'll find your t-shirts just right for our space adventure. The spacesuit that people see the most is the one made to protect astronauts from the harsh environment in space. Hey, look! There's an astronaut! Yeah, well, why don't you ask that astronaut to tell us about his spacesuit? Hi, kids. Hi. Hi. Are you having a good day? Yep. yep. Is that the actual suit? This is the actual outer layer of the shuttle EVA suit. The real suit, when they use it in space, has 11 more layers underneath what you see. The backpack is full of $8 million worth of equipment, and the suit, when it's on the ground, as you see it now, weighs 258 pounds. One man couldn't handle it while it's on the ground alone. So we stripped it down to show people what the suit looks like, and this is the end result. The real suit 
is intended for use in one place only, and that's the weightlessness of space. What are those controls? When you're in the sun, on the sunny side of the, during the daytime part of the orbit, the temperature can be as high as 500 degrees above Fahrenheit, and it can go in the shade when you're in the dark side of the ship, it can be another 500 degrees below. It's almost a thousand degrees difference. So these controls here are life support controls. I can raise the temperature inside the suit, I can decrease the temperature inside the suit, and the remaining controls are communication controls. I can communicate with other astronauts in the cargo bay, I can communicate with the commander or the pilot aboard the flight deck of the shuttle, or I can communicate directly to Houston if I've got a satellite relay. Why are the letters and numbers all backwards? When you're inside the suit, you can't read the outside of the suit. You just can't get your head into a position to see what's going on out there. And when you want to adjust one of those dials, we carry a mirror on our wrist on the last page of our mission profile notebook. And I can switch to that mirror, and I can read the controls through the mirror. Is that real gold? That's 24 karat gold film. We put a film of pure gold over the lens to reflect away as much sunlight as possible during the daytime part of our orbit. The sun is so bright in space without an atmosphere to scatter the light that it's like a brilliant spotlight right in your face. So we have to reflect off as much as possible. And we found that gold had what we call higher reflectivity value than silver. So we stuck with the gold. Why are your fingertips bluish gray? The gloves in space have to be very thick. We have a little trouble getting the design down. We had to make the gloves so thick because of the temperature extremes to keep the fingers warm or cool that when an astronaut is handling small items like nuts and bolts, they have difficulty actually feeling it if it's in their hands through the thick gloves. So we found that when we put a rubber silicone compound on the tips of each finger and thumb, when they grab one of those small nuts or bolts, They've got it. They know they've got it, and they're not very likely to drop it. Thank you. You're more than welcome. There's another suit that most people hardly ever see. It's called the launch and reentry suit. It weighs over 90 pounds and consists of a whole bunch of things. Like what kind of things? Like things designed to protect astronauts from the pressures of breaking away and reentering Earth's gravity. They begin with a set of long underwear for warmth followed by a radio-equipped hat and helmet, which allows them to communicate with each other as well as mission control. For safety, each suit comes with its own parachute, flotation device, and gloves. And then for comfort, each suit has its own inflatable lower back pad, inflatable seat support, gravity pants, and signaling device. Next comes socks and boots. But there's something else missing. Do you guys know what it is? Well, I'll give you a hint. Astronauts use baby bottles. Well, close, Maria, but no shooting stars. Actually, astronauts wear a diaper and a belt to hold the diapers into place. Diapers? Yeah. Don't you know why? No. Well, pulling away from the Earth's gravity can be really painful on the bladder. So astronauts wear a specially designed diaper and a belt which allows them to be relieved of painful bladder pressure when taking off. Harry, these shirts are just fine. I agree. No diapers for me. Oh, all right then. Let's go. <laughs> this is the shuttle's cargo bay. It's 60 feet long and 15 feet wide. Holy moly, that's big. Why is it so big, Harry? Well, because it's the backbone of the space shuttle program. I think of it as a space traveling truck that can hold up to 50,000 pounds of cargo and electronic equipment destined for outer space. You mean you take things into outer space and you leave them there? That's right, Jerry! What kind of things, Harry? Well, all kinds of things, but mostly scientific and communication satellites. Well, here, I'll show you. Once the shuttle has achieved the orbit at once, astronauts open the shuttle's giant cargo doors, and then working together, using astronaut power, they lift, then place the satellite into its proper orbit. They, they lift it? Well, remember, there's no gravity in space, so satellites that may weigh thousands of pounds on Earth can easily be moved in space. Whoa, the space shuttle does all of that? 
that and much more. Because what goes up must come down. And that's what the space shuttle is handy for. Like, what do you mean, Harry? Like now, when satellites break down, thanks to the shuttle, they can be repaired in space. How, Harry? First, the pilot maneuvers or flies the shuttle as close as they can to the damaged satellite. Then using the shuttle's robotic arm to hold the satellite in place, the astronauts attempt to repair it while still in orbit. But Harry, can the astronauts always repair the satellite in space? Good question, Maria. Not always. Well, sometimes satellites need to be brought back to be repaired or replaced. And when that happens, they're brought back to Earth the same way they're taken into space, in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. How did they do it? Well, it's a little like... Fishing! Fishing? Yeah, but in space, it catches a whole lot... Finger. This is how they do it. The shuttle gets as close as it can to the disabled satellite. A cable is attached to the satellite, just like when they repair them in space. Only this time, when the satellite is hooked... Oh, get it? Fishing? Hooked? We get it, Harry. The arm pulls the satellite into place over the cargo bay, and then with the help of space-walking astronauts, it's carefully and gently lowered into the shuttle's cargo bay where it is secured for its trip back to Earth. This is awesome, Harry. Is there more to see? You bet. Follow me. The front or forward part of the space shuttle is known as the cruise department. And that's because this is where they spend most of their time. Now, this part of the shuttle is divided into three decks. The first, or lower deck, is used primarily for storage. The second, or mid-deck, as we astronauts call it, are known as the living quarters. This is where the crew sleeps, relaxes, and performs their experiments. What's it like sleeping in space, Harry? Oh, a lot like sleeping on Earth. Except in space, you wouldn't sleepwalk. You'd sleep float. And that's why you have to be anchored, because anything not strapped down will float in space. Guys, what are we doing? We're seeing what it's like to sleep float in space. <laughs> Pretty spacey. Harry, what do astronauts do when they're not sleeping in space? Work. Work at what? Well, mostly scientific experiments. Experiments on what? Like when they hatch chickens in space. You see, because there's no gravity in space, the experiments the astronauts conduct are very important. Harry? Is this what I think it is? Well, if you think it's a space toilet, you're right. It's the space traveler's ultimate porta potty. Mm. It's where astronauts go to the bathroom in space. This is wild. Does it work like my toilet at home? Well, only if your toilet's hooked up to a vacuum cleaner. Mm. Well, in a way it does, and in a way it doesn't. Now, remember that there is no gravity in space, mm. and the vacuum action is what ensures the safe and sanitary removal of waste products. What? This. This is the kitchen, and this is the oven. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you guys make me a cake? It is my 3,333rd birthday, after all. No way! I look pretty good, don't I? Yeah. Thanks. This is the scene I'm interested in. And it's up here. Okay, we'll be right up. Hey, wait for me. Hey, look at this. Oh, cool. How'd you guys get up there? Hey, this is where the commander sits. And the commander is the one person on the astronaut team who's in charge of the entire mission. Cool, huh? I'm ready to take command. Hey, this is where the pilot sits. 
Now he or she actually flies the spacecraft. Just call me Captain. Look at all these buttons. Wow. spaceships we've been learning about in school other spaceships are long and slender it doesn't look like a rocket ship because it's not it's actually a glider with rockets and there's a big difference what? well all right let me try to explain it in easier terms let's see um it costs lots of money to send people and equipment into outer space and that's why NASA came up with a space vehicle that could be used over and over again. And ta-da! Here it is, the Space Shuttle. For the Space Shuttle, every time we wanted to put something or someone into space, we had to use giant rockets to do the job, many of which could only be used once. But because the Space Shuttle is designed like an airplane and flown like an airplane, after each space mission, it lands back on Earth, just like an airplane making it possible to be used over and over again. It's like a space taxi. It's there when you need it, and that saves both time and money. Harry, it has rockets. I saw them. Galloping galaxies. Give me a space second. Uh, I was just getting to that. Although the space shuttle has its own rockets, they are not powerful enough to push the shuttle into space by itself. They're used primarily to maneuver in space away from Earth's gravity. But in order to reach space, the shuttle is attached to two solid rocket booster motors, each carrying over 500 tons of fuel. Two minutes after liftoff, both rocket boosters shut down and separate from the main vehicle and land safely in the ocean, where ships pick them up to be used again. The external tank, which is still attached to the shuttle, is loaded with over 500,000 gallons of fuel, which are used to power the shuttle's three main rocket engines. Approximately eight minutes after separation from the rocket boosters, all the fuel in the external tank has been used up, so it too separates, allowing the shuttle to proceed on its own. It's like a piggyback ride into space. Did you guys see that space shuttle shuffle? Well, do you mean that every time they use the space shuttle, the rockets have to be reattached? You're absolutely right, Jerry. How do they do that? By magical genie power? Close. But the magic they use is the magic of engineering. And it's done in one of the largest buildings in the whole world. What's the building called? And where is it? Well, let me show you. It's called the Vehicle Assembly Building, and it's located at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. After the shuttle has been serviced and been certified ready for flight, it's lifted on end and then placed on the mobile launcher platform, where it's carefully attached to the two solid rocket boosters and the external rocket fuel tank. From there, one of the world's biggest trucks, called a crawler, actually lifts the entire launching platform shuttle, rockets and all, and carries it to the launch site, some three miles away. It's called a crawler transport because it only moves about one mile per hour. But when you consider it's carrying over 11 million pounds, that's not bad. That's incredible! What's even more incredible is how hard the crawler works on its journey. Because the launching pads are uphill from the vehicle assembly building, the crawler constantly and automatically adjusts itself to keep the shuttle straight up and down at all times. The crawler is also equipped with a very sophisticated laser tracking system, which enables the shuttle to be lined up and attached perfectly to the launch pad. Awesome asteroids, I'm ready. Prepare for blast off. Roger, Commander. Preparing for blast-off. Whoa! Wait! One magical moment, my little space cadet. 
You can't just walk in off the street and expect to walk into outer space. Why not? Well, because your bodies have to be trained to endure the hardships of outer space. Whoa, there's a lot more to this astronaut stuff than I realized. What kind of training, Harry? Well, today's astronauts have to train their minds and their bodies to deal with the challenges of space. Like how, Harry? Like this. For example, shuttle pilots begin their training on jets and must have at least a thousand hours of flying time before they qualify. All astronauts must study astronomy, meteorology, computer science, and guidance and navigation, and a whole bunch of other subjects related to the study of space. However, most of their physical training has to do with living and working in a weightless environment. They accomplish this by training on a variety of specially designed equipment. But my favorite by far, but not necessarily my stomach's favorite because you get spaced out, is the KC-135. It looks like a regular jet airplane. Rock and roll out of control. It is a four-engine jet aircraft, but when it goes through a series of high-speed loops and dives, it gives astronaut trainees the true feeling of weightlessness. But it can only do it for about 30 seconds at a time, and that's where the water tank comes in. Water tank. NASA has constructed a full-sized model of the shuttle's cargo bay in a 25-foot deep water tank. The water tank provides astronaut trainees with an environment similar to weightlessness for long periods of time. This weightless environment allows astronauts to train for missions such as satellite release and recovery, as well as space exploration. That's what we want, Harry. We want to explore space. Is it time yet, huh? Uh, time for what? Time to go on our space mission. After all, we've learned about the history of space, the astronauts' clothes, and why they wear it. Yeah, we know why the space shuttle is built, what it does, and how it does it. And we've learned all about astronauts' training. So as commander of this shuttle, I'd say we're ready. Hmm. According to my genie-powered space watch, a launch mission is about to begin at the Kennedy Space Center. Yes, we're ready. Let's do it. Can we take the place of the astronauts, Harry? Can we? Well, I can do that. But you know what? Let's let them fly, and we'll go along as the crew. As rockets and shuttle begin to ignite to carry this spacecraft out of sight, there's one small change I wish with all my might. That's Maria, Jerry, and Hard Hat Harry are the ones to take this flight. And lift off of Atlantis on a mission to study planet Earth. Houston now controlling. Atlantis is underway on its 13th trip to space, rolling on course for a 57-degree inclination orbit. Maria, we're in space. That's right, Captain Jerry. Now we have to fulfill our mission, to launch the Spartan satellite. The crew has opened the cargo bay and has finished the equipment check. Thank goodness there's someone to help us into our spacesuits. There's no way I could put this on myself. This is just too exciting. I'll go through the airlock first into the cargo bay. This is a little tight through here. Harry, are you coming out with us? No, this is your space adventure. I'll be right here watching and waiting for your return. See you later. What a sensation. Floating and feeling weightless. That training was really important. Look at me. I'm using my jets to reposition myself. Whoa, this is cool. This is amazing. I'm turning upside down to watch the satellite launch. But I guess in space, there is no upside down. Ready for launch? I'm ready. Here it comes, the Spartan satellite, right out of the payload area of the cargo bay. Ready for satellite release. 
The arm is pulling away. There she goes. Now that it's released and positioned, it's time to activate the satellite so it can gather information and send it to Earth. Our job is done. It's back to the cargo bay. I'm moving in. I'm approaching the shuttle, ready to re-enter. Commander, we've returned to the ship. You can close the payload bay doors. It's time to return to Earth. Harry, we did it! Yes, my little space buddies! Mission accomplished. We're heading home. Prepare for re-entry. Job well done. Lower landing gear. Touchdown! There's the parachute! That was out of this world! Where do we go next, Harry? Well, my little space explorers, I gotta get you back to the gift shop. But Harry, I'm not ready to blast back. Yeah, I want to blast forward. I'm with Maria. I don't want our space adventure to end. Aw, uh, hold on to your space t-shirts, my little space knots. Your adventure isn't ending, it's just about to begin. So remember, eat right, stay fit, and always try to do your best in everything you do, and your future will be bright. Oh, oh, I think I'm being called to another space adventure. So galactic goodbye, I've got it fly! Far out! Was that real? Were we really on the space shuttle? I don't know, but I do know that one day I'll fly in space and I'll be there to meet you. If I had just one wish, I would try to make it clear. I'd like to fly so high right up through the atmosphere Circling the earth, going round and round Gliding through space, then coming back down In another orbit, orbit on the space shuttle Can you imagine being weightless, feeling so light Stepping out the back door, dropping off a satellite You set it loose, then you let it linger You can lift a thousand pounds with your little finger When you're weightless On the space shuttle Just one wish, I would try to make it clear I'd like to fly so high right up through the atmosphere Circling the earth, going round and round Gliding through space, then coming back down In another orbit, on the space shuttle Can you imagine being weightless, feeling so light Stepping out the back door, dropping off a satellite You set it loose, then you let it linger You can lift a thousand pounds with your little finger When you're weightless, weightless. on the space shuttle